kasa taraba thank you jesus rebe de kosa taraba mata pala brodi mola glady today we're beginning a new book we'll study the book of john shalom you're well amen i want us to to finish this one i know this one we can finish in jesus name i'll be doing some few verses together uh <clears throat> i'll be reading two different version depending on what i want to emphasize the book of john that's what we are beginning now uh i will not really get deeper just rush through it uh so let me let me read the book of chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5 amen the bible says in the beginning I'm reading amplified version here. Yeah. Before all time was the word which is Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. and without him no the one thing was made that has come into being in him was life and the power of and the power to bestow life and the very life was the light of man the light shines on in the darkness and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it amen yes uh, this is a bit complicated english although it can make some something a bit clear uh in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was god we are talking about jesus here now this book is unique to the other gospel because whatever you find in this book of john you hardly find it in other gospel the remaining the first three you hardly find it and john is a man who has revelation of Jesus than everybody else in fact when we study the bible we realize that the bible talks about how john was more intimate to jesus than all these other disciples even when he has a his, his sitting position when he's sitting when the disciples are sitting he sits at the bosom of Jesus you know he's he's somewhere here he's the one who's next to him if you are close to somebody you will know more about that person that others will not know and in this case we are talking about god so close to god until much of the things that unajua hata tukikienda hii town sasa hizi na kitu ifanyike something happens all of us have we have our own stories of how to tell and there are things you forget and there are things you say somebody begins from where you have not, you have you have not begun and points out some very important because all of them are writing about Jesus and the person who wrote about Jesus and gave the right understanding of Jesus 
describe Jesus the way he was revealed to it is revelation may god give me grace to speak today <laughs> i know i get a lot of content if i begin digging <laughs> but let me just say it because it's important and this book every believer must study if you are very careful to 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 follow what i am doing from the time i began exposition i began with the book of genesis because all believers must know what genesis contains those teachings are on our youtube you can listen to it then i came to colossia there's a reason all every believer must be taught four books before we go into some of these other books and all of these are foundational books which will establish you in your faith so genesis when we study genesis we learn so much anything important begins in the book of genesis we studied that colossian we came into it because we realize that if you will not realize the place of grounding yourself in the word of god the things in the environment will shake your faith it can even shake you of god now we are here now here we will be studying about the deity of jesus the whole book talks about who jesus is so this man is saying jesus existed before everything in fact everything was done by him this is in this word in says in him was life and the life was the light of men life was the light of men and light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when the bible talks about light now if he is the beginning of the beginning if he began the beginning who has everything about the beginning who knows everything Many times when the Bible talks about light it refers to original the first knowledge about everything that's what it refers to who knows everything about everything if not the one who created everything <laughs> In, on earth today the people who have the right information about the universe are believers and this one we get through revelation even as we study these verses from 1 to 5 now when i look at it there's a way god opened my eyes and revealed it to me which when it when it lands on me never let leave my life. even this one still god can put what is written here what began in the beginning because he's the source of all information Now if get that original information about the person who made and everything there in then the life you live has a problem it has some shortages in upunguvu you will not live life fully because you are missing something here there praise the lord so that's why standing as he was before the beginning everything was made by him including you huh? these two guys paul and john they have unique revelation about jesus unique you we study in chapter number 1 of colossians is speaking just like this guy it's revelation you know if you want to succeed in this life you must get original information that is in stored in god And I've told you if anointing comes on you it will open your eyes to get you that information. Yes, it will. So it's talking about this light not nobody could comprehend. This information that we speak is too mysterious. You only access it if you have the anointing. Can I use that word? And many people because they do not have this mystery it becomes mystery to him you see he's talking about the light shines in on in darkness and darkness comprehended it not in other words so he might even be talking about darkness can be people who have not got the light the light is also this revelation from above can be called darkness in chapter 9 in the book of ephesians they are called darkness people who have not got light they 
try to understand these people who have who have got revelation from above they find it very hard they cannot they cannot it is only god who can reveal who he is to you and you cannot understand god through your mind it has to be revealed to your spirit this knowledge is not of the mind this is of the spirit and god is spirit when he downloads whatever information that he has if you seek him and this one also that's why i began by talking about how intimate john was to jesus and he could bring out this information that others could not even today the closer you are to god the more secret you have of god the bible says book of psalms the secret of the lord is with who them that fear him that is enough let me not continue beyond that <laughs> verse 6 we are talking about the witness of jesus now there came a man commissioned and sent from god whose name was john this man came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe in christ the very light through him john was not the light but came to testify about the, the light there it was the true light the genuine, perfect, steadfast light which coming into the world enlightens everyone. I want to pick this one from, from the KJV. He says that light was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. Wow. Verse 8 and 9 has something to say. The Bible says John is not the light remember john he's an old testament prophet the truth is he does not have much revelation about jesus his responsibility is just to to show jesus to make a way for jesus now if you could have understood who jesus is he could have joined him He continued baptizing people, which was not his work. And then he began preaching things that he should not preach. The gospel of condemnation. You try to condemn anybody, they will they will hit you. <laughs> and then they will kill you. <laughs> try to condemn somebody. You are like this. You are like he did he was not the light <laughs> yes I know the light was Jesus but there is something he didn't know have you ever been offended by God have you reached a point where you got offended by God God you know I am offended because you did this and that have you ever said that you have a problem have you ever been offended by your parents Especially when you are young, let me talk about when you are old. Because when you are old, you behave like a fool. You can never stop calling them and behave like a fool. <laughs> but when you are very young, <laughs> those days, when you get offended with them, like look, talk about somebody like uh, like Rema. She can get angry at you, but after some few minutes, she's just back. Not even a minute, seconds. She's just back to you and like, I want also this other one. You. Sometimes children are very wise. They forgive easily. <laughs> as as we, we... John was offended by Jesus. Huh? And he said, go and ask. I believe his head could not have been cut off. If he was not offended in Jesus. See, if you get offended with people, you'll get a lot of problems. <laughs> you disconnect. You're disconnected from God. John didn't understand this man until he sent his disciples. Go and ask him, are you the one that you are waiting? How did you even introduce him in the first place? Hmm? 
Are you the one we were waiting? Or we wait for another one? <laughs> what a language. <laughs> Can you imagine that kind of... He didn't get... He didn't know Jesus inside out. I know he, he's, he's, he has done his work. He has done his work. But there is something that he, he, he missed. Otherwise he could, his head could not have been cut short. His life could not have been cut short. The Bible says Jesus is the light. Is Jesus, John came to witness about Jesus. He, he came to expose Jesus. He's not the light. And then he says Jesus is the light that enlightens every man. In other words, the one that can open your eyes to understand life as it is, is Jesus. That's what you're talking about, civilization. Unless it, it descend on you, even your brain and your mind cannot understand much. Unless people who meet Jesus never remain the same. In fact, even the, you know, even their priorities are totally different. They will not be focusing on the things of this earth. Their big desire is not about these things here. No. It's about God. If you have God, you have everything. But when you do not, when this light does not enlighten you, you be, believe like you, you live like people who have never known God. Your priorities are wrong. You don't have purpose in life. No meaning about life. You don't care about others. Now when you don't have, when this light, whenever this light shines, everybody who Jesus enlightened, their direction changed in life. He came to Peter. What was he doing? Huh? Fishing. Did he continue fishing? <laughs> if this light shines on you, your direction will change. You realize that you're going in the wrong direction. That was not what you have created for. You are in the wrong place. And you will not be satisfied. Have you seen people who are not satisfied, fulfilled with whatever they are doing and experiencing? You meet this Jesus. Even if you have nothing, no cent in your account or in your pocket, you are very peaceful and satisfied. What matters is not you have been informed. What matters is what God will open your head and drop into your mind. There's a way then you understand the, exist, the reason as to why you exist. The reason for living. The light that enlightens every man. Paul met him on that route, you remember. What happened to him? He discovered the reason for his existence. Anybody who met him, Zacchaeus met him, was just trying to look for is this Jesus? And the guy is very short. Your shortness cannot hinder you to meet God. <laughs> Amen. The spirit man is not short. <laughs> the body the truth is the heart of Zacchaeus has already connected with Jesus. So many others might be have, have been climbing the trees. But only one person was identified. Only one. And when he met Jesus, in other words, when we talk about the light that enlightens every man, we are talking about God giving you the reason of your existence. So that you even you can explain why you exist. If you ask so many people why do you exist, they say to glorify God. It's not about to glorify God. <laughs> when when he, he releases the information about you to you, you'll not be doing what you're doing. And these people look at you as a bad person does not understand what he's doing. But the truth is, you are on the right track. They are on the wrong way. You have peace. You enjoy everything you do. 
Even if it looks very foolish. You know, very foolish. Others are rushing for what to own, get, possess. Looking for how to change life. And at last they discover you got it. They missed it. Because even then they will reach a point they will discover why they existed. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possessions, and those who were his own, the Jewish nation did not receive and welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That is, to those who believe in dare to trust in and rely on his name who are born not of the blood but blood natural conception nor of the will of the flesh physical impulse nor of the will of man that of a natural father but of God that is a divine and supernatural birth they are not born they are born of God spiritually transformed renewed and sanctified you see the amplifier the way it puts it Bastin says though he is the one that made the universe and everything therein including people they could not understand him in verse 11 they could not receive him he is on the truth is these are not his own Jesus was not a Jew he is more than a Jew Jesus was, a, huh? Jesus was not a Jew. Otherwise, if he could have been a Jew, he could be practicing those cultural things. And by the time he arrived, there are so many groups among the Jews. Sadducees, Pharisees, Zealots. There's another one called Essenes. There's another one called Common Judaizers. So many of them. And all of them have their own cultures and practices. All of them. But they are all called Jews. But he does not belong to any group of these. He's not a Pharisee. He's not common Judaizers. He's not Sadducees. He's not Zealot. He's not Essenes. He's not all this. He does not belong to any of their traditions. By birth, he is a Jew. Just like some of us, when you got born, you know, you're, you're born, they gave you the, the name of a specific tribe. But when you get born again, what happens? You don't belong to that tribe. Why couldn't they understand him? Why did they reject him? It takes revelation to know Jesus. And these people, what the Pharisees, Sadducees, Zealots, all this, you know, we are only given some few who are very influential, like the, the, the two, Pharisees and Sadducees. There's only you hear what you hear in the Bible, but there are for many. Those ones are the most influential in those times. That's why we hear those two. And what they have taught people could not help them to understand Jesus. Just like in our church today, in many of our churches, the theologians have confused people not even to believe the very Bible they carry. You carry the Bible, you don't even believe what it says. It's like those times. In fact, <laughs> you are looked upon as somebody who's confused. This thing is of revelation. Not of the Bible school. Pharisees have their own schools. Sadducees have their own schools. You realize that they will ask. They will ask John. <laughs> what are you doing? Who are you? Where did you come from? 
which is called you call your preaching people are coming to you tell us who are you are you the messiah says i'm not the messiah they cannot understand this man also called john because john also came there's a way john also came he didn't come from among the people the bible says he was was filled with the spirit from the from his mother's womb this man is on another level even if, by the time he arrived people are following him so they could not understand him very few of them believed in him very few is unfortunate sometimes when people have taught you things for years only to come and learn and when ben isaac begins speaking here you wonder whether you have ever read that bible you are understanding is turn upside down <laughs> you're like hey what is this jesus told these pharisees when people come and sit under you you make them twice as much as you are they become they qualify for hell two times more than them is dangerous they have created unbelief they have never met god yes they are saying that he came to his own if you talk about jewish but jesus didn't live as a jew that's why his language is different the way he does things are different the way he lives different and they are like who is this hmm? but the very few did you realize that it's only people who were needy and had some some bit of challenges that received jesus as their lord because they knew that jesus contained the solution of their problems 99% of them that followed jesus they discovered that this is god all that we need is in him our life cannot exist without even today people who have discovered the men of god and what they have those are the true who follow truly i have preached for some few years i know even i have kept coming here is only somebody who has discovered something in me that follow that those they just come because they are because they have been taught the routine of coming is there <laughs> not the routine of coming because you know sunday we go to church especially believers who don't come to church except sunday those are not believers they have not discovered god i am sorry but especially in this church let me talk about other churches because other churches only meet on sunday that is routine you cannot fellowship with god once in a week you depend on some other things there the whole six days mess yourself up come on sunday and behave like what if god if you met god you will be under his feet every day and you know that your life without him cannot be complete all the people that followed jesus became his disciples there are those who discovered who he is god opened their eyes that's why he says many are called few are many are just followers they don't know <laughs> but this is them that believed on him these were now discovered him Until they release themselves on him i like the way they describe it in verse 13 who were born not of blood natural conception nor of the will of the flesh physical impulse nor of the will of man that of a natural father but of god that is a divine and supernatural birth they are born of god spiritually transformed renewed and sanctified 
they are born from another world they have discovered who Jesus is and that's why they give their all to him two things determines whether you are not God your time and your money how much of your time that you give to him determines how much you have known him and how much of your money goes to God determines whether you have understood him if those two things you realize people hardly give to God they have not yet understood him there is a way you, you rhyme with him flow with him whenever you get to understand him there is a way nothing is so important more than him not even your business not even your family members he becomes the only person who is superior to you above everything else you know your commitment can even shock others this is extreme has somebody said that to you this is God is more expensive than what you have or what you are spending your time on people feel when they time come into the church and spend time on the things of God they are wasting time do they people feel like that hata ujaingia kanisani umeanza kuangalia sana si yego kuna mwingine amekuja mbele yako hataki hata kutoka you are there just the inside here people are not there who talk do like that how do you just come before his presence i know you don't know him and you begin looking at your watch si pastor madizi si so talk here kwani shida what is your problem <laughs> you go to you and you go to what explosion will be shocked when you go to what can just means you'll be shocked when a man of god stands there they don't move out of this thing they can stand there three hours <laughs> if you are type that complains about going home as the like it come my keep uju utatoka hapo sangapi but the man is speaking life and light for you who enjoy what comes from this man of god you don't look at time look at what is coming out of this man because something is coming out of god to you you have understood something but whenever you find yourself you're not even concentrating when when the time of giving comes like now if you are being told You know what has been offending me for so many years after I was sitting in the pastor line any time I go to his meeting after he teach he pre- every preaching after he does he says look for the best note that you have in your wallet <laughs> you know some of us feel like dying because you don't have money as such then I was not earning much you know so you, you look for the best now you know if he says the best you can imagine what is the best that you have in your in your wallet if you Right, but at least you have a thousand and you might not have like one of our friend from this land who went to a church and he was told giving less than 50 giving less than 200 is not allowed in this church he has even some he got people pull out the 200 look at if you think you are more than god that you think god is too too poor to afford the money you have you know <laughs> that's what the time we treat god but when you get a revelation of who he is nothing is too expensive to give to god nothing is too in pastor lies church whenever people begin giving Every time he, he preaches he says give the best thing give what you have never given and if people take their vehicle you know they came with the vehicle the keys of the vehicle they put in the envelopes and they take it there and they look for matatu to go back home 
and you feel like they are wasting themselves. Are they wasting themselves? And their vehicles are given to church to do the work. Those are people who have understood God. Hmm? Imagine you give your vehicle and then you walk home and someone is driving your, home, your vehicle and he passes by you. And you don't feel anything. <laughs> How does it feel? Or you give your fare and you walk. And the pastor passes by with his, with, his, with his vehicle. Do you feel like dying? That is... The truth is that is a seed you have sown. God will give it back to you multiplied. Hmm? Just, like, just like Isaac, Isaac uh, Abraham. Giving the only son he has. You know, it looks like being a fool, yeah? You prayed for this guy for how many years? And then you are slaughtering him just before the eyes of everybody. How does it? It doesn't look very foolish. But is it really that God desires to get this thing from him? All that God is looking at is that thing should not be your God. That vehicle, any possession that he has given to you should not be your. It should not be something that will hinder you. The business that he has given you should not hinder you to come into his presence. That business will collapse when you stop coming to church. And some of us who have nothing today will have millions. Give us time, you'll see. We'll be millionaires more than others who think are carrying millions today. Give us time, you'll see. We'll be flying when their business is going down. Yes, that's the truth. When you rise up spiritually, all you need to do is grow on the inside. A time comes when you attract billions of shillings and you don't even feel it because I was listening to Selman. Selman said there were days I preach, somebody just comes and they put some small money in my account, uh, my hand and they say thank you, God bless you. <laughs> he said that I decided to go. So that I cannot be they don't give me envelope. They send a check to the bank. They don't give me money in Israel. Even for appreciation, this is what you are going to appreciate. No, no, no. He says today. Look at who is, who is inviting that man today. And he said all the secret is in growing spiritually. When you grow on the inside, the word of God that has filled you will attract to you all that you need. From everywhere. So being in his presence is for your good. It's for the betterment of your future being in his presence today. It looks foolishness to come here every day. But your tomorrow is being worked on. You know sometimes we think about the tomorrow. We are very uncertain what will happen. No. Just come and sit before him. He will take care of that. He will put everything in place. What you need the most is his word. Understanding life from his perspective. Not from this human way of looking at things. You know, how far do you see? You see very... You don't see far into the future. You only see here. I don't know what the future holds. But I know the one who holds the future. If you are working with the one that holds the future, the future will be revealed to you. And those who don't know, 
what the future holds will rush ahead of you. But you've already put your heart house right with God. Preparing for the future. Great one ahead. Not this one that is just around here. If you look at the Bible, every man of God determined the future. Oh, sorry, where the speaker left. Went. Sorry. Uh, if you look at the men of God, they are the ones who are the carriers of the future of the people of God. Have you realized that in the Bible? They lead over 40 years. Read the whole Old Testament, do you realize? King Saul was, became king for over 38 years. David 40. Moses 40. Samson over 20. Who holds the future of the people? Come to the New Testament. Who holds the future of the people of God? The future is placed in the men of God. God has already opened their eyes to see far. Them that don't come close to the men of God. Don't see far. All decisions they are making will crush them over these few days. And you walk ahead of them. Amen. Father, we are thankful for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We desire to know you, Jesus, like we have never before. Yeah, if we just arrived in the church simply because our parents were coming, now we want to be intimate with you, to know you, to understand you, so that we structure our life anew. Not the way we are used to, not the way we are trying to understand before, but from your point of view. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We can give. If you are to give through online or Mpesa, we are using the equity one. The money we give on Wednesday.